and gentlemen, welcome to another webinar from Philips Lighting University. Today's webinar is titled Lighting University, Lighting Design Within Media Architectures. And it will be presented by Torsten Bauer. He is an award-winning creative director, curator and consultant of international immersive installations in the field of projection mapping and media architecture and founder of Artist Collective Urban Screen. So without any further delay, I hand over to Thorsten. So yes, um, today uh, today's topic um, is the lighting design within uh, media architectures. Um, and there are some specific um, topics to lighting design, which I think that will change in the future quite much and did also change in the um, past um, few years in, in my field. So lighting design really became um, an issue of my work. It is not my basic profession. I'm a media artist. I'm, I'm from the coming from the media art side, but still um, all the work I do so far is more and more evolving into the topic of lighting design. So I, I'd like to, to point out the specific um, evolution within there. And um, yeah, let's see. So um, first again, a little introduction. So my name is Torsten Bauer and I'm the founder of urbanscreen.com. Urban Screen is uh, an art, um, started as an artist collective in 2000 and uh, we founded a company in 2008 um, out of this project. I'm going to introduce you a little bit in the works we did so far because it's quite um, important for all the following ideas to understand where um, they come from. Um, since two years, I more and more work as a free curator in, in, in projects since the um, consulting part was getting so big and um, the field was um, getting kind of complicated working with many um, different disciplines i decided to take um, this cur um, curating and this consulting part out and what i also did is um what, I, what i'm right now now on to is i'm um, building up a um, very specific consulting product um, in the field of um, media architecture and it's called augmented architecture Dot com. So um, today I want to step into like four basic points for you. First is an introduction. I mentioned that already um, to a little bit reveal the background of um, the ideas um, I developed and also like um, that influence very much the work um, of our media architectures today. And the second point is the media architecture and the digital revolution to a little bit see how this um, topic is embedded into a broader um, mega trend. And the third point will be a little bit more specific to lighting design and the convergence of lighting design and media production. And the last point will be an introduction to um, a best practice, um, uh, a media facade we just um, realized or we realized in 2014 in the city of Hamburg. And I'm going to um, guide you through this development a little bit to um, yeah, reveal the, the concept behind um, this thinking of media architecture. So my first uh, video charge and I hope this um, finds you in a let's say fluid way that the um, internet will provide um, also fluid pictures um, of what we can see so this is actually a video we see here and this is um, actually a film that was made from the Sydney Opera so what you can see here is no fake um, it's just a projection onto the Sydney Opera so there's no post-production on this picture. You can see as on all other pictures you, um, I'm going to um, present to you today, there's no post-production. This is what we do. We did in 2011 the Sydney Opera with a huge system of um, large-scale projectors. We projected these images onto the Sydney Opera. And uh, now jumping to um, another building in Hamburg, um, um, the Kunsthalle of Hamburg. And again, this is, um, these are just um, large-scale video projections um, projected on a, on a surface. 
maybe well, most of you will know that it's called the technique um, today this technique is called projection mapping so we uh, over the years really ex in an experimental way um, um, surfed through the different disciplines and tried out what these um, technique of projection mapping on surfaces um, adapted to surfaces can do and can can uh, yeah where we can um, see the future of projection within these disciplines um, and we also invited other disciplines into our work and um, as you see here right now there is a uh, work which was kind of a theater piece in the end that we did in an art festival in Enschede in Holland and um, so it's always the basic core technology is always projection but the approach um, we we followed is was very um, different from the one hand side from theater up to digital production um, there was like this whole field of experimental work we we tried to conquer the last years and we've been quite uh, success successfully with that thankfully um so we have been invited um, to projects all over the world this for example you see here is um an elite university in the usa and um yeah it was very very much fun to do this project but still um we decided at one point that we wanted a little bit more out of it and so we developed um sculptures are our own so we also provided the the surface where we pro projected on um, and developed this kind of hybrid digital analog um, wall sculptures as, as you can see here so we developed the sculpture itself as a physical um, building or physical piece and adapted um, a suited um, digital uh, projection to it and this was one coherent piece of art in the end um, our last project, our last, or one of the last big projects was um, the Gasometer Overhausen, which was qu quite of quite special because the room you see here is 110 meters high, and we provided a, a full 320 degree um, projection mapping on it. And yeah, so to resume that, um, the last 10 years had been quite the journey. Um, to me and to to our crew and we learned a lot and um, we are lucky to be one of the pioneers of this um, projection mapping technique so um, um, coming to the next point so in 2011 something interesting happened there because i've been invited to develop um, kind of a similar pro project, but in a way very different project, to develop a media facade for the city of Hamburg, or in the city of Hamburg. And this was a very interesting task, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this today, because there is a big distinction between temporary installations as we do in the art context you just saw before, and um, permanent installations. Um, as you can see here right now. And this is gonna be one of the core um, ideas I circle around. Why is there such a big distinction between that? And how has lighting design influenced um, our work um, within this media arch architecture so much? And why is it, had it become more um, the idea of, of creating architectures like a lighting designer would do and not so much like a video artist would um, would do so um as i mentioned i'm in the field of consulting also right now this is for example one project um on the um times square um where we developed a new media facade and the approach is always to find a solution which is also cost uh, um, minimizing the cost because the um, the LED structure you will use for such buildings are still quite um, quite heavy amount of budget or consume heavy amounts of budget and so I always um, try to develop systems which on both hands um, are in some realm that you can and that the the investor can can um, pay it on the other hand that it gets the whole building um, within um, the setup. So 
And there, there are these crazy creative solutions are very necessary if you want to provide for the, on the first hand good architectures, and on the second hand um, architectures where the whole building is um, covered with um, with kind of media uh, with a media idea. Yes, um, coming back um, to the distinction I made um, two slides before that. So the, the the biggest difference is the difference that the art installations I did the last 10 years um, are temporary from their nature. So they're often just played for two or three evenings, sometimes two weeks, um, more seldom like four weeks, but, but still a defined gap uh, where these projections um, as on the Sydney Opera to the left here, could be perceived um, on, a, um, on an architecture. And in the permanent um, installation, it's uh, very different. Um, you can imagine um, in, the, in new buildings, especially the media layer is um, built right from the beginning into the structure of the building. So from the very first day, of the opening of a new architecture, there will be a media layer influencing um, the the identity and the um, and the view or um, yeah the shape and the color of this um, building. And this leads to a quite interesting and maybe also philosophical question, um, because in a temporary installation um, on the left, you always comment a pre-existing identity. It's meaning that we play with the identity that the building had already before we came there with our projectors. So there is a certain common sense of a of an urban society. They they know their building. They love the Sydney Opera, and they know it for a quite long time. They there are stories associated with this building, and now we come there and we create these projections and as a comment to a pre-existing identity, to a commonly shared idea what this building is standing for. And so the, um, the temporary installation is um, always more, and um, has to be seen as a comment to, to a um, pre-existing identity. On the other hand, the, the um, media architecture um, is therefore under the force to create an own identity with the media layer. And this is quite an interesting point. So um, the video that we show on such a, um, architecture is under the force to create the architectural identity. So if we remember to be on, in a place or remember um, a certain um, identity of a city, um, we also remember the churches and, and the, the, the historical buildings in, in their identity and say, okay, this is Bremen, this is Hamburg, this is Munich, or this is Boston or somewhere. And how can we now talk about this identity when the shape and the color of a building is constantly changing? So this is quite, quite a um, philosoph philosophical um, question. I want to bring right to the beginning. Um, because this is the, in the moment the idea where I am chewing on, and it's that distinctiveness, dur um, durability, and reliability are important requirements for the establishment of identity. How can an object that constantly changes establish a durable and commonly shared identity? And this leads to another um, interesting question. So we, if we want to answer this in a proper way, then we maybe also have to change the understanding of identity of buildings or, or, or urban landscape as we know it so far. So maybe we can include dynamic processes in identity. And can dynamic processes play a part in the formation of an identity? Um, which is a kind of philosophical question, and please stay with me here. I'm gonna drop to like more settled terrain in, in, in a few moments. But, but um, it's a very interesting um, idea that indicates on, um, that we are really on, on, on the edge of, of uh, a huge um, change within architectural or urban planning, 
that we are facing um, here. So how can we um, uh, see the, the, the buildings of the future that are m m m mediated and change um, their shape all the time within this context of, of an urban identity? And this is a, uh, yeah, the, the, let's say main topic I'm, I'm, I'm right on, just for um, an introduction in the very beginning. I will come back to this, to this idea um, later on when we step into um, media architectures. So media architecture and digital revolution. Um, so to add a little bit more substance to where we, um, where we find ourselves within this topic, um, of course, the um, the digital is more and more conquering our daily life structure. Nothing else than in media architecture, where suddenly our architectures in our city um, have a digital layer attached to them. Um, there is a big industry all over the world which deals with exactly the same idea of bringing the digital into our daily environments, such as the HoloLens. Um, as you maybe all know, where an augmented uh, reality um, a goggle um, is projecting digital um, images into your um, daily life environment. But also the art scene, this is a video on the um, right downside right now, is dealing a lot of it uh, with it. And this is quite a funny um, example. This is uh, a purse, um, a briefcase, which changes the size um, depending on how how much money you have on your bank account, so uh, it connects with the Bluetooth device of of your um, of your mobile phone and then checks your uh, amount of money. And um, if you like are on the beginning of the month, you have like a thick um, purse. Yeah. Quite funny example, but still the same idea of that the digital more and more is um, is. Um, yeah, getting a sensible part of, of our daily um, environment. And a whole industry is dealing with that, not only media architecture, we have to see that. And I'd like to introduce to one idea I and one story behind that. So again, you see here the Hamburger Kunsthalle, which we staged um, quite a while ago, um, 2008. And so I asked myself, um, why is that? Why is there such a big trend that the digital is more and more coming to our urban surfaces or even all um, around our like daily um, daily life? And um, so there's this little story um, I want to tell to you. So this was an, um, a projection we did, and the background was we ha we hadn't had too much money to produce it, and it was one of the architectures we we really would loved to 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 stage. So we did it anyway. And um, since the biggest um, cost factor in such a projection mapping, or not the biggest, but one of the big um, cost um, um, factors is the event technology, we decided um, to build up the event technology on the same day um, as the projection was showed. Uh, this is actually a little bit crazy because you have to adjust all the projectors um, right before the show and um, you have to really be trained in that, that you um, are fast enough. So uh, I did that, I trained it, and I, um, I was fast. So um, in the dawn, when the first light was visible from the projectors, um, we um, adjusted the projectors. And as you can see now here in the left downside, so this is the way the projectors are probably um, adjusted to um, an architecture. You first, you reproject a, a certain grid on the architecture that is um, uh, that comes out of the architecture, meaning this grid you see is the same size grid as the stones, this, the white stone grid in the architecture. So what I had to do is, I had to arrange these white grids to the architecture um, with a certain technique in real time. You can like push push these um, grids onto the real stone grid that is um, existing in the in the architecture. And I was doing this for half an hour, and in, after half an hour, I was done, and the um, white projected grid was perfectly sitting on the stone grid. And suddenly I realized that I was surrounded by lots of hundreds and hundreds of people. And I, I was asking myself, what's, what's up here? 
and um, they started clapping. So there was a big applause going on in the last moment where I where I managed to to adjust this grid, which, which was just a technical process. And I was I was really um, wondering and laughing about this. And then um, uh, people came to 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 the stand where I was standing and was had been interested about this piece of art and saying thank you this was like really amazing and they were really like um, asking who did that and, and about the background thoughts about this and I was like crying tears um, about that um, because it was not the show it was just the adjustment in, in the, um, um, the technical process and later on I found out that the um, administration of the Kunsthalle did something wrong in their schedule. So in their schedule, they posted the time where I said I will gonna start my technical um, um, adjustment. So they posted that at, as the start point of the event. So everybody came and everybody thought this was the show. But anyway, they didn't run away. This is the point. And it's not only funny. And after a few days, <laughs> when I stopped, finally stopped laughing about this issue, um, I started wondering because in every joke there is something, there is a deeper truth. And um, I figured out for myself, hey, um, if what is there that excited the, um, the the audience in this point? And I think now, or I get out of it, that it's not only the show in projection mapping, not only the narrative layer, not only the dramaturgy or the history that we reveal or any aspect. It's just also the fact that we are managed to to get it done, to bring a digital layer in coherency with an analog structure like an architecture. Just this phenomenon is, means something to the people. And I think that it comes out of a commonly shared wish that, that the digital is like more and more um, getting in coherence uh, with our real world and that these both worlds that we always perceive in two worlds, meaning one is in the frame in our, in our um, um, computers and PCs, and the one is like our daily uh, daily life. That these both worlds, um, 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 yeah, come together and merge um, into one re um, reality. So that this is kind of a, a need um, that 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 we see here that only brings up this big industry of augmented reality, mixed reality, and all these um, um, things that, that are going on right now. So this is also the, the force why I believe that media architecture will find its place um, in the future um, landscape. Um, I do not think that every, uh, every building will be a media architecture, but I think that it will, will find its place because there is this need of combining um, these both worlds which will influence technology and the way we perceive media and um, I think nearly every um, aspect of our living environments of the future. So, resuming that, um, to just make this um, realm clear, when we talk about um, media architecture, we also talk about the polarities um, of architecture and media, of stone and light, which are like the basic substances um, to put it that way, that we deal with here, the analog and the digital, and in the, the much most broad um, saying, the things and the signs. So um, within this thinking, um, I'm landed right now, that this, what we do, ha has much more background and much more... Um, influence of a, of a broader broader um, trend than just projection mapping, than just art, or than just um, even architecture. It is an expression of, um, of um, the biggest mega trend in our time. Um, it's the expression of the digital revolution. So coming back now to um, media architectures, um, why what is my philosophy about there and what did I learn so far um, about creating media architectures out of the projection mappings? Mm. In this picture, we can see um, one of our projections, you already know, um, the Sydney Opera. And on the right hand, I just picked out a random music clip I found on YouTube. And I just wanna compare to you um, this, um, this both videos. 
And it's um, if you look at the the the, um, the way that we um, create media nowadays, which is perceived in in computers or in TV even, um, the amount of 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 cuts and the amount of like um, movement within a picture has um, accelerated um, so extensively that that um, that we really um, not have to rethink, but um, really have to stay up with these with these um, accelerated um, media. And on the other hand, um, we ended up um, creating such um, like de-accelerated um, content as we did on the on the Sydney Opera. And why is that? And the point is, I wanna wanna make very clear here: this is not out of a concept. That this is not out of born out of the idea that we wanna play around with very reduced Bauhausy um, um, content and footage, and it's not even a style. This is where we ended up um, learning making projection mapping because the architecture itself trained trained to us or, or um, provided to us this direction. What I mean by that is, if we want to create a projection mapping properly, the most crucial thing is that the projected image and the architecture, that these both layers merge together to one coherent sensation. And if you want to do that, um, you can play around with lots of stuff. You can even show such a video as you see on the right. But this these, um, um, fusion will not happen. So after all these years, we came up that we really had to de-accelerate our content, had to really adjust the content to the movement of the of the architecture which is basically non-movement um so we so all this the acceleration all these um reduced um way to produce content doesn't came up um um out of a conceptual idea it came out of um out of um the actual architecture the actual art architecture is our master let's say like this which trained us to to go in this direction and and this is a thing where i take out quite a lot because i think this will be the case with every digital content that we um will bring into our daily environments that the daily environments um will like rule and give us the tempo give us the um the level of excitement um that the um, in case that we want to perceive the digital um in like a oneness um in our daily environments so um this is like the basic philosophy um what we learned um, and what we're going to transport into media architecture so one more interesting um thing though um and this came out um um out of the last project, I'm gonna um, show to you Clubhouse San Pauli, a convergence between lightning design and media production. This may be also um, very interesting for for um, you as audience today because it's very specifically dealing with the aspects of lighting design. So uh, I'd like to introduce to you this project we did um, in 2011. It's an opera we staged, Idomineo. You saw this already in the very beginning, and. We had a very interesting setup here because it was very um, like a um, controlled room as the theater is. So we had the the whole stage. We created the whole stage. We even created this um, uh, or designed this wooden wooden um, stage design here. So we had that as a 3D model, and we had um, several projectors surrounded this um, um, this thing here. And what you can see now is the main aspect we played around with. So. What we can see now is a virtual light source that is um, circling around the room. And all the light, the highlights on the objects and the shadows on the floor and on the object itself are just projections. So there is no real light within this um, um, situation. It's just fake light. It's light that we um, um, simulated in a 3D environment and reproject it onto a real surface. And once you convince the audience that this is a real light situation, you could from there on create effects like these breaking apart or several um, other aspects uh, that are quite astounding. But the basic 
is um, on, for this all is just to simulate very conventional lighting. And for example, in this situation, which symbolized a sunrise in the very morning, we just had one, like let's say, analog light, and this is the the, the spot on the um, on the main figure right now, and the, all the rest is done with projectors. So we we try to 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 use as less conventional lighting as uh, we um, as needed mostly just for spotlights and the rest um, of the lighting design was done with um, projections and this is in a very interesting way um, and it was a very interesting way for us to rethink lighting design um, in a way that we simulated conventional lighting and if you um, if you in the end like um, also from the budget side have a look on it. There, there hadn't been too much projectors involved here, and um, the flexibility and the possibilities you achieved with such a virtual lighting that we provided here had been so much um, more. Um, there had been so much more possibilities in doing creative lighting work with a basically not too big amount of technology behind that. So I'm very convinced that in the future we will all we will more and more see projectors which are involved in classical lighting design scenario and this is like the point where this experimental study um is is, is pointing to um and as a little um um yeah point to make it here this is quite funny and um, I found this uh, right directly after um, we made this um, opera. It's the first projector with a E27 socket so that you can, can um, use it as a normal um, light bulb to project images or even just um, virtual light on, on the um, surface table. Um, I think they did, didn't develop it to, to project with virtual light, but they developed it to um, to project images, but anyway, the similarity is clear. Um, this was, um, yeah, um, another technical device which pointed out this um, thing. So again, in our projection, virtual light is um, a very, very basic um, issue where we play around with. So I spend uh, the most time in the part I developed um, in, for this projection. So we did like develop this with four, um, art directors um, at Urban Screen and where I was dealing with actually was the lighting design. I was like um, four days only putting virtual lights on the city or Sydney Opera which was quite a big fun and then also developed this shadow play um, which is really mapped physical correct on the shape of the opera and as you can see the highlights on the tops and um, the, there are over 15 uh, virtual light sources that I put all around the opera to to give her um, a first good look. So this is um, um, basically a standard in our projections to first light the building in a classical way, and then reproject this um, lightning uh, or this light image onto the architecture. And also um, on. So this. So I'm gonna. St I don't know if you hear the sound um, right now because there's a sound in the background playing. Anyway. Um, so this is. This is um, the media architecture I showed you in the very beginning. Um, and there you can also see the same same technique of virtual lighting. So where we um, had the possibility to produce um, high resolution um, or to show high resolution pictures on the media architecture, we used virtual light sources as a main um, a main um, yeah producer or a main main visual element for this architecture. So this should just indicate that we not only use this technique um, um, for for a temporary art installation, but it became also um, a very, very um, um, core um, visual element for a media architecture itself. So uh, I'm gonna step um, into this um, idea, um, how we dealt with it um, in a few minutes. And just another example, 
um, that not only I, um, I, with my ideas of projection mapping, dealing with um, this con convergence between lighting design and media projection. This is uh, the newest um, development um, of uh, lighting for cars um, from a brand, car brand we all maybe know. And they actually use projectors as front lights. And why did they're doing that? Um, they're doing that because within a projector, you have the possibility to just um, light this area you want. And the car, for example, here showed here is possible, um, is, it, um, is able to see that there is a um, bicycle um, heading towards it and then black out the uh, the region where this where this person um is um on the street and so the person is no more blended by the light and this is done by project pro projection mapping technique in the end so another example where lighting technology and um um imagery uh, technology um is merging together in 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 one discipline so I think we are really have to rethink their um, technology in this, um, and also in the way we think lighting design in one hand and um, uh, media design on on the other hand. You you can see it again. Um, a very interesting um, point, though. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip this one because I'm quite short on time. Um, yeah, just to close this. The other hand, um, to use single light sources as um, as pixels, you maybe all know these um, uh, technologies where wristbands on um, on the audience angle are um, in a big system combined to to one image, um, and this indicates also the future of um, one future of lighting design that lighting design is used not only to light lit up um, certain areas of a building or something else, but also as um, a part um, of a big screen system. Um, so stepping forward into my last point, um, the um, media facade um, in Klippers Hamburg. Normally, um, the media facade um, sadly are um, um, produced in such ways that we can see here. So it's just an array of um, LED mesh which is uh, mounted in front of a picture and the content and the whole um, yeah, uh, concept of, of media architecture um, does not go together with what the um, the building is actually standing for or who is working in the building. So this is just two devices, one big screen and one architecture, but it's, in my sense, this isn't a an, an media architecture at all. So in 2011, we started this project in Hamburg and there are five um, interesting points to it. The first point is that we had been invited to the very first sessions of creating this architecture. So together with the Hamburg-based um, architect um, Akul Kams, we um, um, developed this structure from the very, very beginning. So the first idea we had was an idea about content, about how this architecture um, should work with media. And from there on, we developed the physical structure. And this is like a huge difference to the most cases of um, media architectures where um, where we could first um, create a visual idea and afterwards um, define the physical structure. And what we did was, um, what we had done was we um, decided to break up the screen into very, very um, um, diff not different, but differently arranged single patterns. So what you see in magenta right here is these are all high resolution patterns that are, that are um, all over the um, the, the architecture and the um, more brownish yellow um, patterns you can see here, uh, same size and from the outside, same looking patterns, but still they could not produce high resolution pictures. So we broke apart the 16 to 9 screen into a certain topographic and certain spread it uh, around um, um, media. And we used um, two different techniques for that. The one is, as I just um, described, the high resolution um, matrix where there are like RGB LEDs, um, millions of RGB LEDs integrated into these panels so that the eye could see 
the LED in a directly um, in a direct way. And the other technique um, to the left side is an indirect lighting system, which means in the bottom of these elements we integrated um, an R um, very strong RGB um, um, line, and that could lit this whole element in one different color um, or in one color. So basically. Um, yeah, this is a certain um, technique. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna jump right through it. The third technology we used to have this all um, um, by it together now is this transparent uh, media glass, which is quite new a uh, new product on the market. And this transparent media glass is a glass where in between the isolating um, um, isolating line in the glass there are um, um, pixel stripes integrated. So you have an 80% transparency from inside out and outside in, but still you could like um, produce high resolution or from far away high resolution um, pictures with it that are incredibly um, um, bright. And I use this um, technology for the elevator, um, which I'm gonna show um, in the very end what I did with that. So three different technologies. First is, uh, media um, element um, integrated. Um, what you can see right now are the high resolution parts. The second um, is the on the, um, on the elevator on the right. There is the uh, transparent glass I just introduced to you. And the third element is um, this indirect lighting, where every um, every and each one of these panels could take one color at a time. So. Um, and these three different technologies we combined together to one media facade. And this was a conceptual decision because I wanted to, um, to combine classical um, architecture lighting with high resolution pictures in a way that these elements that you can see right now are getting the biggest pixel in the picture. So the classical um, indirect lighting system is combined with the high resolution um, technology and in a way that these both together um, are seen as one big picture. Um, this was quite a prototype um, in the thing, um, in, the, in the development. And of course, the indirect lighting um, is stronger at nighttime as in daytime. So this especially works good at nighttime. Um, and it has like this beautiful sense that the picture we see here and this rendering is merging together with the architecture in, 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 a, in a very beautiful way so that we are not only confronted with a high resolution screen, but we are also confronted with an architecture to any time, um, um, yeah, to any point of um, um, the presentation. So uh, the last point, uh, which was special, um, it comes back to the very, very first um, point I had in this um, webinar today, is the creating of um, so-called core visuals. This is a term we invented and um, core visual um, is, in our sense, is a set of videos that define the identity of the architecture. So we created like huge amount of very, very de-accelerated de long sequences, very beautiful sequences of such visuals, um, as you can see here, that are basically the identity of the architecture. So as long as no other content is, has, um, is playing, no advertising is, is shown, to the um, to the urban um, um, public, this is the content that is playing constantly, and this is kind of the, the together with the physical structure. This is like the virtual identity of the architecture, and in my sense, this is the first time where a video layer had become a, 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 um, a architectural Id identity. This is the last. Um, Speciality, and to show you what we can, we did with that all in um, combination, and as um, I think the last slides here, um, this is um, the idea which is born out of the task: how can we create actually an advertising 
um, on the um, um, media facade in Berlin, Hamburg, which is um, which is an advertising on one hand, clear, but on the other hand includes the whole structure and includes the whole technology and the whole architecture itself is is a carrier of the message. So this is a very famous um, beer brand that we can see here in Hamburg, a local beer brand. And um, what we can see now is this is still a rendering. So I had the idea of putting this elevator and going with the elevator right through a virtual liquid, like virtual beer. So this is me standing here in the elevator and um, I'm going and driving through a virtual glass of beer, let's say. And again, there the topic uh, was to combine the virtual, um, meaning the virtual beer in the glass, to, um, with a real um, um, real life element, which is the elevator. And the advertising runs now, and it works like this: that if you want to go to the um, to the club, which is on the on the upper floor, you press the button downstairs. Then it, the the advertising starts, and you step into the um, elevator and go through the um, through the for the um, virtual beer here. So quite funny, but um, also um, mirroring the whole conceptual idea behind that, combining virtual and real environments in a new way um, and in a yeah, hybrid way. So to resume, just. Uh, a short thing in the end, the media facade in my sense is not a screen. The media facade in my sense is nothing more than a facade that can change shape and color over time. And of course it can be used as a large screen, but should not co confuse <laughs> with that. It's very close to, to, to what we know so far in our world of screens, but we should not use it and we should not think in a way that we used um, screens um, before. And the whole thing bringing um, digital content onto architecture is, is a topic that ha ha had to be really rethought and, and has to be re um, rethought if we want to um, produce um, media architectures um, that are responsible to put in um, our um, daily environments. And the lighting design has a has lot to do with it because in the deacceleration of media content and in all the adaptation of media content onto the architectural structure, you will end up with um, a phenomenon which is very close to lighting design again because if a content m moves very slowly, it more and more gets just to admitted, uh, admitting light. And we have to see that um, a screen device is nothing more than, than a lamp source in its very basic nature. And on the other hand, we have to see that il an illuminant is nothing more as a very big pixel um, in, um, in, a, in a broader sense of a bigger screen device. Yeah, and this is um, basically uh, where I want to end with. And I created this keynote and then I just had to one add on because um just wanted to mention and bring that because in the last week we um I was uh, yeah phoned by um, the organizers of the German lighting um award and we won the German lighting award with the concept I'm going to present to you today which is very fresh and I'm very happy about it and I'm um, so more convinced um, by this award also that with all this idea ideas that we brought into the media facade in Hamburg. This is, um, seems to be a right way of thinking media architectures of tomorrow. And um, yeah, um, and we're very proud and um, touched by this award. And it really indicates that we are on the right path right here. And so I thank you very much for listening.